Hello, everyone, and welcome to the semifinals of the StarCityGames.com Columbus Open Weekend. Senator Phil is Patrick Sullivan. We are here in the booth, and you're preparing to watch Brennan DeCandio with Black Green Delirium, number two overall seed against Hunter Nance. Playing Green White Tokens, number sixth overall seed in our elimination rounds. It's a green feeling here in Columbus as the top four decks are all kind of base green decks, but DeCandio is your reigning open champion. He won our last open in Atlanta during our Atlanta Invitational Weekend. We're going to see if he can keep things going. He's going to start things off with a traverse in the Uvenwald for a swamp. Over to Hunter Nance we go. He'll start off with a Plains and a Thraben Inspector. Nope. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the Councils. I was expecting Thraben Inspector. <laughs> <laughs> Poor authority of the councils. Listen, Hunter, your, your heart was in the right place. I mean, I get what was going on here. And I'm sure it was it served you well at various points over the course of the tournament, but now is not really that time. Tapped. Yep, yep. definitely tapped. Tapped. Yep. Oh, yeah. For Nance, he's got a forest and a heart of Kieran. We go back over to DeCandio now. Virgil's Gear Hulk, the draw. In for one here with the Ballista. And now here's another walking Ballista with a counter. Tapped. It's, it's, it's tapped. <laughs> it's, it's, it's tapped. Listen, you've got to get your value. <laughs> I guess you, you do. you got to feel like your cards are up to something. Yeah. This is an Issa. Make a plant. I think turn on the heart of Karen. And give some good beatdowns, probably. Oh, yeah. In for four. So the Nissa stays neutral on loyalty on this path. Yep. But the Heart of Kieran can defend the Nissa now, too, which is pretty sweet. Grim Flayer, the draw here for DeCandia. That's an interaction right there. Rishkar in hand here for DeCandia. Oh, well. Rishkar plus the Walking Ballistas. You found it. And now your Walking Ballistas make mana? You found it. Oh. Who to Lally? <laughs> this is exciting. Yeah. What are you doing in here when and you can be out there? And gear hole in the Oh, my it, God. Yeah. There's just so many things. Yeah. I actually like Brennan's deck a lot. Yeah. Like a lot. Yeah, there's a lot to like here. <laughs> Looks like he's got the resources on a mulligan here to push through Nance's nut draw of turn one. Sorry, the council's turn <laughs> Turn two, any card. <laughs> Turn three, any card. <laughs> the new nut draw. <laughs> <laughs> new nut draw. <Yeah. laughs> Walking ballistas will get counters on them now. Rishkar Pima Renegade is a pretty good one here. So this is somewhat interesting. DeCandio can send both the Blisses in, and if Nance wakes up the Heart of Kira into block, whatever one blocks, he can simply use to gun down the Nissa, which will then be at two loyalty. But I think he's just got bigger dreams. Yeah, the Virtuous Gearhawk plan here, and just dumping all the counters yeah. around, it's just like, okay. Another plant token and get in with the Heart of Kieran. And even though DeCandio is underneath some pressure, he's not underneath so much pressure where he needs to change. This might be a Gideon here. Yeah. yeah I mean, Nance's start is great. Yeah, this is a great start. I mean, this is, all jokes aside, <laughs> this is the draw, right? Yeah. This is the appeal to this deck. Pass turn back. DeCandio will draw a card, a Swamp. And Swamp's a nice card here as it allows him to cast the, the Virtuous Gear Hulk and be able to attack with two threats. Mm -hmm. And he does need to start wearing down this board a little bit. I mean, if he wants to, he could simply load up on the Walking Ballistas and just take care of the Planeswalkers. Which is, I, I, I mean, I kind of want to do that. That's the, that's the floor on what he can do right now. He's got a lot of options on what he yeah. can do here. And I think that's why we might see this turn take a little while here for Brendan. He goes, how does he want to balance out? He's going to put four counters in the walking ballista. I 
Might be some time for some beatdowns. Yeah. Mm, maybe not with Rishkar. Plant token's gonna block. I was gonna go after Gideon. The next thing I know, I'm gonna find out Walking Bliss has Trample. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't, but I'm ready to find out something new about a card from either Revolt. That's a heck of a magic card. I think it's really, really good. I was interested to not see a. F I, I was expecting a 5 3 split here. Because five puts it in a spot where, oh, he can just chop up anyway. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you can just do this one at a time. Yeah, I keep cause, yeah, because, yeah. I keep, oh, my. I God. thought you could just, I thought you yeah. had to sack it and throw it at something. Right, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, he can just, I thought that the five, three split made more sense because he, the Nissa was at three and that way well, you can d divide up. But it actually just doesn't matter. Yep. And now Gideon's dead. All right, so that was, again, that's. That's Nance's, that's the draw yep. right there, you know. Handled by two walking blisters and a little bit of help, don't get me wrong. Not that Nance is out of this game, but that's supposed to be the draw where, yeah, you're playing creature deck, you can't, there's no way to beat this. Mm -hmm. Here's two mana. Lambolt Pacifist is going to turn on Heart of Karen. Here's an attack. Trade there. Decandia is going to fall down to eight. But it's just kind of crazy to think that Decandio handled that so... I don't want to say easily because it wasn't easy, but he handled yeah. it. Now he's just got to be able to take care of the heart of Karen, and then he can kind of turn the corner. But Hunter is still applying plenty of pressure here. Now, I believe Brennan just drew a to the slaughter. Oh, uh, another thing. Yep. Walking Bliss is an artifact that you get to put in your graveyard whenever you want it's to. It's true. In a deck with Delirium Considerations. It's true. That's just, you know, while we're on the topic here. I think it's a Grim Flare that's going to have the battlefield tapped. Pass a turn. And Fatal Push to the Slaughter as the leftovers here? Does he have Push in hand? I believe he has Fatal Push in hand. Okay. I didn't get a great look. I know he's got to the Slaughter. I didn't know if he had Push or not. Two in the main. Four Grasp in the main, too. Pacifist. Turn on the Heart of Karen. In for four and three. This is a stasis snare before blocks. I mean, I would imagine this is going after the Gear Hulk. Yeah, that's what I would think too. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm doing that now. Cat's, so. a, cat's <laughs> out of the bag. Cat's definitely out of the bag. This is what I'm doing. And now we have, I believe, enabled Delirium too. Instant Sorcery, Creature Artifact. Yep. Nikania will draw. Another Gear Hawk can't cast it, though. Nikania is down to five. And now the question is, what does he want to do with this Grim Flare? Because on the table, I, I guess the awkwardness here now is that the, unless he's willing to cast to the Slaughter just on a token, those pacifists are going to flip. I guess that what he can do is sacrifice the walking ballista to take care of the plant. And then his to the slaughter takes down a real card. Mm -hmm. He'll pass. They are going to transform. Remember, Grim Flare right now is a 4-4. Also, DeCandio with a Gear Hulk in hand may just say, Oh, I'm happy to trade off everything here. Because he can put a butcher, he can put the ballista in front of the butcher, he can put the Grim Flare in front of another butcher. That is nice. No. Oh, <laughs> Nance is just going to pass the turn back. I'll put a counter. Oh, oh yeah, yes. That too. 
we, you and I together, we are going to figure out all the interactions just, with that card. Wow, is this doing a lot? That card is so good. <laughs> wow, is this a yeah. lot? Rishkar is going to give some counters here. Uh, now he actually has the mana to cast to the slaughter now. Jeez. Yeah. Na Jeez. And now Nance is like approaching getting locked. What's this? Pacifist? All right, untap. I was going to say, I, I was a little surprised there that the Candio, you know, I felt like there was kind of a position point there for him to push a little bit. I just forgot that he could just use the mana to dump a counter on the walking bullets. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, big snake. Big Snake was the draw. Oh, I wonder if we can weave some interactions together <laughs> this way. Big, big Snake the draw step. Nance is going to draw a card. I would describe this as a dispiriting game to lose if you are on Nance's side of this, if that's how it goes down. I mean, with, the draw, with the draw that he had. He did kind of double mulligan because both the authority of the councils, sort of. Right. Only sort of, because given that he was trying to pressure the Candio, they, they, they do have relevant text. Yeah, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't nothing. Yeah. I mean, they, they, I'm not saying the cards were good, uh, but it did provide some disruption. And now we're going off with the Ballista plus Constrictor, and Rickshar allows him to tap the creatures of counters for mana. Uh, yep, it's, it's about this time. Yep. I think, I think we're doing it. This is doing it. I th and... Yeah, I think the Candio might have figured out some some good pieces yeah, here. If we this would. isn't doing it, I don't. It can't be done. Whew. So he's going to spread around some counters here. Mm-hmm. And those creatures are going to get double counters because of Windy Constrictor. Sweet. Yes. Yes. And yes. So, I'm pretty sure that's that I mean, I just, on, this, I have, on this game. I have no idea how Hunter comes back from this. I have no clue. I mean, it's got to involve Virtuous Gear Hulk. I would imagine the Planeswalkers are no good. Yeah. This Oath of Nyssa, I mean, that's a start. I mean, but even Virtuous Gear Hulk, is it, because of the Walking Ballista, Decanio just has so much agency over what attacking and blocking looks like for the rest of the game. Yep. And he's getting outsized on the battlefield. I mean, this is and now we also so now the plan I think for Decandio is okay. Every time my ballista gets a counter, it gets two counters. All my creatures tap for mana, so I can conceivably put six counters on my ballista a turn. <laughs> yeah, like potentially, like that's the road that I'm starting to go down. Or or do other things. You yeah, know, like other stuff. Yes, there's other, other yeah. paths too. Yeah. Because right now, if he untaps, he has four lands and five creatures with counters, so he actually has no access to nine mana. Mm -hmm. That's two Walking Ballista activations with the mana left over. That's obviously plus four, plus four on his Walking Ballista. Here's a Gideon. Really good card. Not great in this battlefield. He'll make a 2-2 two -two Knight ally. And pass. And you can see Decanio just with a, a total shrug. Yeah, sure. Okay. Pacifists will transform, which means they're easier to kill now. Use a counter. Take care of the plant token. Oh, now to the slaughter is good. Why? <laughs> why is there a planeswalker and a creature to kill? If so, why? Yeah. And you may ask yourself, why didn't Decanio say shoot down the token first so he could get a pacifist for his trouble? Because it doesn't matter. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. <laughs> Now we're clear for takeoff. Yeah, I, I think Nance is, j is just flat locked here. And this is the concern I had in the matchup is, you know, decandio has got these interlocking pieces. It's very hard for Nance to break it up. And what does the what does the ground look like? Because there's no Archangel Avis in there. You know, Nance is almost all entirely on the ground. What does it look like when decandio gets his pieces l rolled up together? Well, looks like this. So when I did the deck tech with Brendan <laughs> yesterday, Here's a Thraben Inspector. Clue, Hunter's going to sacrifice the clue right away, draw a card, cross his fingers, hope it's something good. When I did the deck tech with Brennan yesterday, we were talking about some of the newer cards in his deck, and he said, yeah, Walking Ballista is the best rare and or mythic in this set. And I was like, 
that is pretty strong. Mm -hmm. And I still think it's strong because there are multiple formats of Magic. But in Standard, uh, I'm buying in yeah. now based off of this. Con like, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely entertaining that conversation. It has just run away completely with this game. Of course, there was some help with Rishkar and, Vir and Virgil's Gearhalt, but it is running away with this game. And, and this is, uh, you know, this is a dispiriting game here for Nance. I, I've played games like this, too, where it's like, this is my, this is my, this was my best, draw. my best draw. I can't do any better than this. And to Candio Mulligan. And now we're here. Going to put two counters on the Walking Ballista with the mana that he has available. Of course, he's actually putting one, but Winding Constrictor means he's putting two. Decandio will draw, picked up a forest, and, and Decandio is in the very favorable position of if he draws a land or spell, he's yeah. happy. Every draw is good. Yep. Because he has a tireless tracker in his hand. More lands means he can activate Walking Ballista more each turn, and this draw is just absurd what he's doing. Yeah, and he can freely attack with the tramplers here because there's just no way for Nance to block. There's no double blocking to be had here. Right. Yeah, that's that's nonsense. And if he doesn't block at all, he might just get gunned down. I mean, the ballista is just eight points on the table right now. Yeah, I mean, this attack's lethal. He needs to he needs to just chump block from here. Yeah, I guess flares a five. That's 10. Yeah, that's lethal. <laughs> yes, yeah, this is lethal. <laughs> it's an attack for 10. Nance will go down to 9. You can just put some counters on Ballista and kill him. So he has to he has to full chump block here. I feel for Hunter in this spot. This yeah. is Yeah, this is this is this is tough on the morale this kind of game. Ignoring the authority of the councils, which again, we knew kind of weren't going to be good going in and he's drawn both of them, which stinks. He had Heart of Karen into Nissa into Gideon. And that's about... And other stuff. Yeah, and that's about as much as you can ask for from his deck, and this wasn't particularly close. Well, it was close. It looked like Nance had a very good chance of winning the game at various points, but once DeCandio turned the corner, Nance got shut out. There, yep. there was no getting back in. There'll be some trample damage here from the Grim Flare. Trigger. Take a look at the top couple. Another walking ballista in there. Yeah, I would want to draw that next turn because that card's absurd. Now here's Tireless Tracker. Play a land, get a clue. Tapped. Definitely tapped. Definitely tapped. <laughs> there are two Authority of the Councils. Yeah. Two. <laughs> two Authority of the Councils. Tapped. Yes. There you go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There Thanks. We go. Thanks, Brennan. There Thank you. There we go. Uh, Brennan DeCandio. <laughs> Got to win. Game number one here over Hunter Nance. Black Green Delirium up a game over Green White Tokens. You didn't, so the funny thing is, you didn't see a ton of the Delirium half, but there is some Delirium stuff going on here. Grim Flare is still just a good card. Yep. Controls the draw step. I have a feeling we're going to see Mind Direct Demon at some point, but for now, what we're going to see are the sideboards here for both players. Hunter Nance has got two Sram's Expertise, two Ajani Unyielding, two Blessed Alliance, two Natural State, a Lambhold Pacifist, a Stasis Snare, a Fragmentizer, a Heroic Intervention, a Thalia Heretic Cathar, a Fumigate, and a Quarantine Field. I'll tell you what, Fumigate looks a little weird. Yeah, but if the game looks like that, I think it's actually good. I, I think I think Fumigate's going to be coming in this matchup, and and maybe Nance's best card all told for a couple reasons. One is he can leverage it better than Decandio can because Nance has a lot of Planeswalkers, so that's already an advantage. And then as we saw, he he has to be able to break that kind of stuff up because uh, once the game looks like that, he he has no recourse. So I think the Fumigate, the Quarantine Field, the Stasis Snare, all those have to come in. And if, if he thinks the game is going to go on for a long time and that he's going to be able to play defense, uh, the Ajani Unyieldings are tempting. But based on that game, I would question my ability to, to play the long game, even with Ajani. Other side of things here for DeCandio. Three Lost Legacy, three Yeheni's Expertise, two Natural State, two to the Slaughter, Nishkana, Graf Widow, a Cletus Trader of Get. A Nissa Vital Force, a Noxious Gearhulk, and Ob Nixilis Reignited. The Ob Nixilis and the Noxious Gearhulk seem really good in this matchup. I imagine Decandio is just going to become a control deck here as much as possible. Uh, the copy of Kalidus, the, the Ishkana, the two copies of To the Slaughter, uh, these all seem like, like great cards to have. Uh, you, you may be able to defend Yeheni's expertise. I think it's probably more for vehicle style, you know, red, white aggro kind of decks. Uh, and I, I don't know if you want a bunch of that sort of thing against a deck with so many planeswalkers, uh, but it's defensible. Nance has a, a variety of small creatures as well. Well, we are going to go talk about 
the regional championships that are taking place on February 4th. A little modern action for you modern fans out there. I know there are quite a few of you for our modern classic today. We had over 200 players, so big shout out to all your modern fans out there. Free and exclusive playmat and token to our first 200 players at each location. Now let's start with the playmat. Howl at the Heavens, drawn by Star City's own Andrea Radak. Beautiful piece of art there for our first 200 players at each regional location. Can't forget about the token as well. It's a 2-2 Wolf token that our players will receive. There are, of course, prizes on the line, along with an invite to the Season 1 Invitational in Roanoke, Virginia, and SCG points as well. And, of course, we have 12 locations for you to choose from. So hopefully one is in your area. Some stores working with them for the first time, some stores we've worked with for a long time. Go to StarCityGames.com slash regionals. Find out more information. Plant your flag February 4th. Play some modern, have some fun, and get an awesome play mat and token. Now we're going to turn our attention back to this match here. Run into Candio, the player we're going to le learn a little bit more about right now. Um, so the Candio is kind of an interesting case here. We don't do a ton of opens in the Florida area, mm -hmm. but every time that we did, we we saw him right around the top eight. Yes. And now we've just seen him win an open at the end of 2016. We might see him win an open here today for the 26-year-old member of Team Next Ridge Nexus from Long Island, New York. Three open top eights with one win. Mistaken for Andrew Garfield on the regular, which just makes sense and has cut his own hair since he was 16. I wouldn't change it. Hairstyle's pretty good. But... He can play some magic, man. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of decks here this weekend. A lot of stuff I think we expected to see. The various takes on Sahili and Mardu vehicles and all that stuff. I, I didn't expect these green, black deck, these green black decks to be this good. And of all the ones we've seen, all of them pretty good. I think, personally, he has the best one. Yes. I, I, his seems... The mixture of raw power and synergy seems like the best blend of any of the green black decks we've seen this weekend. By a lot. And... Again, when we had the deck tech with him, and I talked to him before when we were setting it up, I, I think you've, you've, you've been around Brennan enough to know. Like, not a cocky guy at all. No. Uh, he was very confident in his, in his card choices this mm -hmm. weekend. Very confident. Saying Mindwreck Demon is busted now that that, uh, that Reflector Mage is gone and Emrakul's no longer in the picture. Uh, and just he said that Walking Ballista, like I said, was the best card in the set, which, again, is a pretty loud statement to how good he feels the card is and I, he just feels very strong about what he's doing here and if that game was any indication if he was been doing that all weekend long oof yeah because all those cards are, are pretty powerful in their own right and when everything blended together <laughs> pretty good pretty good uh remember also he has one loss this weekend and it was a two in ether um the reservoir right ether flux reservoir which sounds, sounds funny, but I would also believe that's just a legit bad matchup for him. He's he an interaction. He doesn't clock very fast yeah. either. He's, he's more about trying to lock up the game, not have the fastest possible kill. Seven cards here for each player. Nance will be on the play this go around. Fortified Village. Hunter will be like Canopy Vista. There's a three of Inspector. Clue on the way, and we'll head over to Candia. Grasp of Darkness to draw here for Brennan. He'll play an Evolving Wilds and pass the turn back. Academy Vista, ready. Enters the battlefield tap. Taps. Yeah. There you go. The Candio's going to search for a swamp. It, it's tapped. It is also tapped. Yeah. What do you think was going to happen? It's tapped. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to head back over to Candio now. Oh, boy. The ballista's here. Let's start this. <laughs> Let's get this started. Yeah. In for one. Nats, it's another good start. No, he didn't have a two drop really because Canopy Vista doing what Canopy Vista does. does. Yeah. yeah, but <laughs> uh, Thriven Inspector into Nissa make a plant is a great start for Green White. We know that. The Canopy going to play a forest. That's land number three. There's a ruinous path for the Planeswalker. 
I guess it's a matter of if he thinks he can handle Gideon or not. But both Planeswalkers are just worth taking care of. That's why the, yeah. that's, that's why the deck's so good. Because you want to kill both of them. To Candy, will pass the turn back over to Nance. Nance will draw. Also, you can see he has Kalidus in hand, too. So there's some, some burden to be manifestant here. And you kind of want to get the sources that generate tokens off of the battlefield when you have Kalidus coming because the, the, the regular creatures, the non-token creatures, are just so bad. A Plains, another Inspector. Nance also served in for one o pass a turn back. 17 to 19 as we head into Candio's fourth turn. Quick update here for you on our backup match. Our number one overall seed, that's Steven Dykeman. Finals. Yep. He's been destroying this tournament all weekend long. And he's got a chance to win it next round. Swamp here for DeCandio. DeCandio, I can tell, he's debating. Can I get in a free point right now? <laughs> because if he attacks, he can spend his whole turn just pumping up the the Ballista. But I think he would rather just play Kalidus this turn. I am totally attacking. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> There's no way Hunter yes. blocks. Yes. Yeah. Give me that point. <laughs> oh, here's Kalidus. Oh, I love it. Come on. That's all day. I love That's it. That's all day. I love it. Just squeeze him for that one. Come on. That point's free. It's on the house. So now there's pressure uh, big time on Nance to have his sideboard cards. He needs Stasis Snare, Quarantine Field, the Fumigate, something like that. I'm going to start by sacrificing a clue. Forest into Nyssa. I don't know if that's what the doctor ordered. For now, Nance will pass the turn back. is going to untap. He'll draw. Natural state. He's got a traverse in hand. Looks like maybe a grasp of darkness, too. Well, I mean, we know Kalidas backed up by removal spells is a that's just how it works. A winning recipe against green white tokens as well. Yep. So, right now, also worth noting, the candy has a two the slaughter in hand. Mm -hmm. and source for the land in the graveyard. If only there were a way to get both an artifact and a creature. If only there were a but way. But certainly no card such as that exists. <laughs> Kalidas. He's going to attack Nyssa. And a plant token will block, which I think is a wise decision by Hunter. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a mopey turn, but he could, you know, ballista down the plant to the slaughter, get a, to get rid of the Nyssa and the Thriven Spectre, get a token off the Kalidus. But that's not good enough. Yeah, <laughs> he can do better. He can do <laughs> way better than that. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> I wonder how many how many matches DeCandio played this weekend where at the end of it, he thought, my opponent never had a chance. Yeah. Like, that, that, like, that DeCandio got this far ahead week one of the curve, and people just had no hope of interacting with what was going on like, here. Like, Hunter is really good, and his deck is really good. And his I just draws, I just, his draws, draws are, are good. Yeah. And it's, it hasn't been enough. I don't, I don't know what he's supposed to yeah. do. He could have cleared. He could have cleared out Hunt, Nance that turn, except leaving with a three minute inspector, and gotten a token with Cletus, and that's not enough. <laughs> that is not enough to get me to use my two the slaughter. Here's another plant token. What's this? Virgil's Gearhawk? Okay. We'll see what the targets are. Two and two. Uh. Yeah, I mean you kind of have to load up on the plants here. Because putting the counters on your non-token creatures right, against Kalidus is just too bad. Yeah, it's just horrible. You're right. Because then he just kills those, and then you just get zombies. So you do have to do it that way. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, you'd rather have one really large creature here to try to at least put Kalidus at parity, but um, Nance has to believe that Candio has removal spells in his hand, and this is sort of the best way to manage it. Well, the, the tough thing here is by putting one of the plants, 
you're basically saying I want your walking ballista to die. Because mm -hmm. he just puts a counter on the ballista and says shoot one, shoot one. Your gear hawk did nothing. But that's still, I, I, I think, go, moving on to the Thraben Inspectors is just too bad against the Kalidas. I agree. I just don't think, yeah, like this, this is the best, I think. Nance basically is announcing, I need this ballista go away. And this is the best way to do it. Yep. Is basically what's happening there. Blooming Marsh, the draw. And now, I mean, the Kenio gets to go crazy this turn. Uh, you get to grasp that, and then if he wants to to the slaughter now, he can. Or he can simply attack the Nissa and move the... Well, I think you just attack the Nissa because I think it's just very likely that Hunter's going to block, and then you to the slaughter and you kill the other two things. Yeah, it's yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, and if he doesn't block, you just can sacrifice the, the zombie and just kill Nissa and move on. Yep. So it's good either way. Yeah, it looks like and no he, block. Yeah, you can keep the yep. two of the slaughter for later. And there's some value here in keeping the two of the slaughter because he does have to be concerned about Nance's one sideboard fumigate, then backed up by a planeswalker after the fact. So if he can hold on to the two of the slaughter, there's there's something to be gained there. Um, Nance sitting with a lot of copies of Ajani in hand too, which would be a way oh, to get he, out from he, under yeah, this. Yeah, if he peeled a six land. Yep. Would have been a good spot. Yeah, Decandio, you can tell, he, he puts a premium on the two of the slaughter here. If you can manage the Planeswalkers with what's going on in the battlefield, he seems pretty committed to trying to do that. Um, because that's that's Nance's way of kind of cheating out of this, is mm -hmm. one of his powerful Planeswalker sticks, Decandio can't get to it, and that's enough to, to gain an insurmountable advantage. Well, I'm going to say this. I mean, Hunter's fighting back. He's got Gear Hulk that's going to pump up these inspectors. He, I mean, he's trying to make a game of it. Yeah. That's for sure. And if he can get to a Johnny, I mean, that's, uh, you know, he gets out from the, under the Cletus, and then that's the starting point. He's going to check his sideboard really quick. I believe he has a Traverse here, so. He does. Trying to reacquaint himself with his targets. Traverse to the slaughter, fatal push. All in hand. Might just go grab the snake. Let's get that ball rolling. I think we can <laughs> I do. Think, I think we can do better. Yeah. I think we can do better. Tell you what, Kalidas plus the snake. Mm -hmm. It's another counter. I missed that initially. Yep. Counterparty could also dial up Ishkana here as a bit of a preemptive hedge against the Ajani. Just ha make sure you have enough of battlefield where, in case Ajani hits, then you can then you can attack it down, even if Nance removes your Kalidas. Yep. He's in deck with Kalidus. Now here is Traverse. Yeah, that's actually one of the other things that I do like about uh, the Candios deck. He's still got the Traverse package. Right. But Ishkana is no longer as good in this format as it once was. But he does have one to search. Oh, oh that's ooh. That's good, too. <laughs> forgot forgot about that. Just another <laughs> another haymaker. Yeah, forgot about that. I thought he was going to go for Ishkana. I'd like this a little more. What's this? Uh, push. Get a zombie. Pass. Okay. I'm going to talk to the talk to the booth. We're going to get that deck tech deleted. Mm -hmm. We're not going to publish the deck list. And you and I are going <laughs> to go. Let's go to Grand Prix San Jose. Just head, head to Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get, to, let's get to work. Grand Prix what San Jose, are, Richmond, what whatever. Are flights to Richmond, yeah, Austin. Yeah. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to take this stuff down. Cut the cameras, cut the lights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Nissa, gonna go down. Counters up. Two, three. Pass. Does he want to two the slaughter now? Yeah, now he does. Yeah, the, he, now he's getting a ton of value off of it. Yeah. And his battlefield now with the Noxious Gear Hulk will be large enough that he doesn't really care about Ajani coming down and minusing on anything. Because you just have to kill the Ajani afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Pacifist, Ajani, make a Sam Black a zombie token. On tap. And draw. Natural state in hand. Along with Noxious Gear Hulk and a land. 
<laughs> now, now candy in the enviable position of thinking, well, there's one Fumigate. Do I even really need to play the Noxious Gear Hulk? Well, the answer is yes. You know, take care of the Virtuous Gear Hulk. As Battlefield may destroy another target creature, if a creature is destroyed this way, you gain life equal to its toughness. Though, Nance with his leftovers of Ajani, if he has if the he Fumigate, draws Fumigate he's, in, he's like right back in. Yeah. If he draws Fumigate to destroy this board, Decandio's hand is a natural state, and he has, I believe, no creature lands. He'll start with Ajani. I mean, I know he played that pretty excitedly. This Ajani's not worth a whole lot here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's nice to get the clears off the battlefield, but much less powerful than the Fumigate would have been. Decandio's going to untap and draw. Hissing Quagmire is what he's found. In. Uh, oh, Nance is at eight? Yep. Nance just dead? Just attacks yeah, him? Menace yeah, Menace. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. of Menace. Yeah, right. five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's it. Um, Brendan DeCandio going to win this match here over 100 Ants. Two games to zero. Black and Delirium going to take care of green-white tokens. And we got a real good deck on the left, my friends. So I think in that spot that um, Nance needs to exile the Noxious Gear Hulk, and then he gets a draw step. 